Yo, this is WSol13 bringing you Raid Shadow Legends. And today we want to talk about guaranteed summon events. Why has it been so rare recently? Why um, have they been focusing on voids more than sacreds or ancient shards? What's going on here exactly? What would I think about it? I feel like <coughs> Raid. Aquarium has figured out that guaranteed legendaries are giving way too much value. I mean, seriously, let's be honest here. If you were one of the people that was able to get the Mytha last year, you would have been able to snowball that unkillable comp into this year, just farming Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss Chess. This year alone, you would have been able to snowball that the Mytha comp from last year to a Kyoku, Weathier, and Sisha. 15, 15, 12 sacreds. All of it you could have you could have pulled easy. You know? And the reason why you could have pulled that extremely easily is because of is if you have access to Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss Chest, your stockpile of sacred shards will creep up over time. Look at this. So I have this, I think, below 20? And it's up at 37 again. And I literally just skipped the last fusion event. And now I have 80 voids. I have 37 sacred. So I can go after this this guaranteed uh, void legendary right there. So the void legendary is actually, in terms of just pure value, is so good. It really is in terms of just pure value. Now we'll talk about the champs and what they actually mean for a specific account right now. But in terms of pure value, if I did this for Turvold, I would not be mad. You break 80 shards, you get Torvald, whatever. If you get another Void, I guess that's great. Right now, if you're at mercy for Voids, right, and you're thinking about trying to go uh, and you're going to break the 80, it's actually not bad. And the reason why it's not bad to try to get, um, to try to get this guy right now, it's not because you're going to get him at 80. It's just kind of like guaranteed value. But if you're at Mercy or you're going to hit Mercy during the 0 to 80 shards, you might want to do it for the chance to get Krisk. That's basically it. So you get a 10x and then you lock in a value of... But, you know, how many people have 80 Void shards right now? So I was able to go after... Um, what's the last one they did for Void shards that I was able to go after? Oh my god. Reho Bone Sphere. I was able to get her 90 Void Shards and then they did Turvold after. I didn't have enough for Turvold. I have enough for this guy, Fortis. So Fortis, what do I think about him? I think he is not great. Let's just, you know, let's just throw that out there. He is not great at all. So I feel like Fortis is not worth 80 Void Shards at all. So you get an A1 that puts, puts fear, and it'll always be critical if the enemy is under fear. So he needs an enabler for you to build him zero crit rate and like max crit damage, max attack, max defense. So you can do him like max defense, max crit damage, right? Zero crit rate. And just have somebody put fear on, right? So here are kind of the problems with the kit. So this one um, puts fear on, I think. And then um, debuff cannot be resisted if the target is under fear. So true fear is not bad. I mean, it's not great, but it's not bad. Um, fear definitely is not great, you know. And then if you combine something that already puts fear out, right, and then you can put true fear on top of that, I guess it's okay because it's an AoE nuke. The only problem is this doesn't get the 100% crit of the A1. The A2 does get the 100% crit, right? Ignore 30% of the death, puts the fear on, and then, um, does this one put, is this, this one do the 100% crit? The damage of the skill is 10% every time you, every time I fear or fear, okay. Uh, 40% chance to be unlocked for one turn whenever fear or true beer. So it's a hidden skill on top of everything. And attack is always critical against targets. So I wish they would have just done attack is always critical under any target that has fear on it. In fact, make that the passive, right? So that would be a great fix. 
right off the bat. So you could have a purely defensive chap that you can go 0% crit rate, max crit damage, max defense. Then we're talking about like a very niche champ, but a very powerful and very cool niche. Right now, the way he is, is he gets crit rate aura all battles, but his skill ignores crit rate. I mean, it's, you know, it's it's just not, the synergy's not there, man. And then you got this um, passive where increases the chance of enemy skills failing whenever they have Fear, true fear. Actually, that's really good. So if you combine this with another with another fear champ, it does get a lot of value. I mean, let's not lie about that. The value is there in terms of combining it with another fear champ. But how many good fear and true fear champs do we have in the game? Masha Led. That, that list is really slim. There's like Masha Led, and then where's who? Who's next? This created monster, um, Madam Ceres. I mean. The fear, true fear list is pretty thin, honestly. And then prevents his champion death and keep them alive with 1 HP when hit by a fatal hit. Removes all buffs and debuffs from this champion after preventing this champion's death. Fully heal them and depletes their turn meter. Okay, so they go back to 100. It's like um, Torment. And then um, has an 80% chance of base placing fear on all enemies for one turn. So that probably checks for accuracy. And then sleep debuff on this champion for one turn. I don't know. It's it's really, really weak. Definitely not worth 80 boy chart. So there is a bit of news about this becoming like a fix down the line. Because um, they feel like that A3, the secret skill, isn't really working as they intended. But you know, if you're banking on that fix, I mean... That's kind of like the play anyway for free to play low spenders. So a lot of people misunderstand what the play is for free to play low spenders. If you're free to play or low spender in this game, you always think the long possible timeline that you're going to play the game. So I think um, there's a promo code right now for, uh, is it Skeleton Crew Forever? Right? Skeleton crew forever. And there we go. So if you haven't gotten that promo, go ahead and get it. <sighs> What's the reality here if you're a free to play or low spender? I feel like the reality for a free to play low spender now is you play the long game. That's it. If your timeline is infinite, then Plarium can never beat you. That's it. That's the that's the trick. So, if let's say you're one of these people, extremely rare group, honestly, but if you've been playing raid since last year, you have the mytha, you've been diamond handing those shards, you should have very close to 80 void shards right now. And let's say you didn't get Torvald, maybe you got Riho, like me, I got Riho, and then I'm gonna get, uh, skip Torvald, and now I can get this guy. So there is like a window here if you haven't pulled a Void Legendary in a while. that That's if you were keeping count. We're talking 200 Void Shards here to hit Mercy. Am I right about that? 200 Void Shards to hit Mercy. That is a lot of Void Shards, yo. So if you did Reho and you did um, Torvald, 90 plus 80, that would be 170. You'd still be 30 short. And you, and you did pull a legendary. Did I say you did both? You didn't pull a, a legendary other than those two. Now, um, 50, like 30 deep into this pool right here, you'll be at mercy. Like, you know, that's like if all things were flat and you never pull, and you pull the legendary and then you just go boom. I don't know, man. I feel like, I feel like voids are are the hardest shards to crack. Like, you should probably hold an infinite number of voids if you can because of just the sheer amount of scarcity that they provide, especially with a void legendary. So if this is the best they can come up with for void legendary, so we had Riho, which is great, Torvald, which is super niche, and then now Fortis, which is terrible. 
if this is like the trend for void legendary guaranteed void legendaries versus guaranteed void sacreds right i gu guaranteed legendaries off sacred shards i feel like i feel like the voids are losing right now and maybe it's time to, to kind of shift your thinking a little bit in terms of which shard should you spend. Is it Void or Sacreds for um, Summon Rush for Fusion Events? We'll have to revisit that because of the development here. But we'll see um, how they do with a Guaranteed Summons, right? So I'll see you all next time. I feel like Guaranteed Summons, they've figured something out that is giving too much value. So we'll see where the trend goes if they stop giving us more guaranteed legendaries. And we'll see you in the next Fusion event.